In Malaysia, breast cancer occurs in a median, in a younger age group. Women has a mean age of about 50 years at diagnosis. The incidence is lower than in the Western countries with an incidence of about 40 per 100,000. We usually quote an incidence rate of about 1 in 20 women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. However, women in Malaysia are diagnosed with later stages of breast cancer compared to the Western countries. About 40% of women present with stage 3 and 4. Because of that, the survival from breast cancer is lower than in other countries and usually now the 5-year survival is about 67% in Malaysia. In Malaysia, there's no population-based screening. So one of the talks I'm giving is about ductal Kasma in situ, which only occurs in 5% of breast cancers in Malaysia. Ductal Kasma in situ is detected on screening mammography. And in countries where there is screening mammography, about 20% of the women with breast cancer are diagnosed with ductal Kasma in situ, where the cure rate is almost 100%. Well, the challenges is that women present with late stages and why do they present with late stages? We have actually done a study to see why women present late. First of all, it is actually ignorance. A lot of women do not realise that breast cancer can kill them. Um, the other one is belief in alternative therapy as an active form of treatment. Because alternative therapy will say that we do not cut, we do not burn, we do not uh, poison because that's what patients think Western medicine is. Because Western medicine involves surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy. So in their terms, it's like slash, cut, uh, slash, poison and um, burn, you know. That's what they think that Western medicine is. Unfortunately, alternative therapy does not work. So a lot of them will present with stage 3 or 4. Okay. And the other thing is decision making. And in the, in the traditional Asian culture, women will usually leave it to their husbands to decide for them. So sometimes even if they want surgery, the husband may say, no, we will try something else. Even though we usually emphasize that if you are detected early, a mastectomy is not needed. You can do a lumpectomy. Women still think that if you have cancer, you need a mastectomy and mastectomy needs, means death because a lot of women with breast cancer do die, but they die not because they had surgery, they die because they, are present, they present late. So the problem with uh, surgeons and oncologists is the late presentation. The other issue is access to care. Even though we have a universal healthcare system, certain drugs are not available. Like Herceptin is only, maybe only about 20% of women have access to Herceptin if they are HER2 positive. Uh, chemotherapy, radiotherapy are uh, actually part of the universal healthcare system. Um, but even so, it's the timeliness of treatment because in the government sector, um, we have a shortage of oncologists and breast surgeons. So a lot of cancers are actually managed by general surgeons who can do a good job. Um, and we also have a shortage of pathologists, which is the most important uh, people because they are the ones to make the diagnosis. Sometimes it takes like four weeks just to get a pathology of a biopsy, a biopsy result. Whereas in the private, there's a big divide between the private and the public sector. In the private sector, if you do a biopsy, you can get the result the next day. Whereas in the private sector, the woman has to wait at least a week or two, sometimes even four to six weeks, depending on where they had the biopsy. Because there are some hospitals without pathology services and has to be sent to a bigger hospital. Well, I've um, attended uh, yesterday's sessions, but um, they talk about really very expensive drugs which are actually not accessible to a lot of Malaysians. Um, of course, it does help because if a woman is uh, rich enough or they have uh, good insurance, then they should be able to assess this new drug therapy which will improve the survival of women with breast cancer. Well, my current research now is looking at the unmet needs of women with metastatic breast cancer. And my research assistant just sent me a draft to read, which I haven't read yet. But um, looking at the initial draft, there are three main needs of women with metastatic breast cancer. First is financial, because a lot of the drugs for metastatic breast cancer are very expensive and, out of, um, and patients have to pay out of pocket because the government cannot provide these very expensive drugs. 
The other one is supportive care needs because you find that palliative care is also in the infancy. So access to palliative care is also rather poor. Um, and supportive care in terms of oncologists. I mean, I just read uh, in the newspaper, we are short of oncologists. Um, I was a breast, I'm a breast surgeon, but I used to do palliative care as well. And the other need is the information needs. Women go to try to get information from all over, and some of the information may actually be misinformation. You know, we have a lot of like um, um, alternative therapists, and they are not cheap. You know, who promise women a cure? Whereas for Western medicine, if you have metastatic breast cancer, we cannot promise a cure, but we can prolong your life. So I think these are the three main needs of women with metastatic breast cancer, and that's the current research that I'm doing.